And then a muzzle was undone, not by the hand of the enemy, but by his own breath weapon, which was also randomly rolled. Miracle breath. It took the combined players of about 200 people to summon up enough power to finally end him, and the explosion leaves a magical scar in the landscape which will likely persist for eons. My sorcerer's deity slot is no longer blank. It now has one word on it. Amazo. Hey everybody, Raidado Celestial here now in Spanish. <laughs> That's not gonna be in Spanish actually, but there were there was a while ago that we did intros in other languages because people left comments like that. It, it became a thing for a for a few weeks, I think. Maybe even months. Anyway, Argus Team, welcome to another Guinea meme, so bring a wonderful day today. Before jumping into it, I wanna quickly kindly ask you if you wanna take a moment to smash the like button, takes a second, helps out, and I appreciate it a lot, so thanks much for that. And uh, yeah, with that being said, I hope you enjoyed the video. That guy gets greedy. Small time, my friend, small time. A buddy of mine went off to college a few years back and ended up sharing an apartment-style residence with four other gamers. At first, they were pretty cool guys, until I was invited to game with them. The entire lot of them were that guys, playing anthropomorphic characters, being a chaotic random, and one player had a custom-made vampire race that was stupidly overpowered and only had an LA of plus one. I had to stop and I knew that it was my duty to stop it. I played a lawful evil human wizard that specialized in the creation of magical items. His character concept was that wealth was often equal to power and what better way to make cash on the up and up than by creating and selling gear catered to adventurers and the elites. Another quirk of his was that he kept a grimoire on him in which he wrote the names of those he and the party had slain. If a name was unavailable, he would write a brief description, approximate age and location of death. Whenever they would stop in a major city, he would copy the most recent editions and deliver it to the mortuaries as an act of respect to the dead. I actually made this book in real life and filled it out after every fight. I went full out on this guy and regularly made the party's equipment for three-fourths of the cost that it would have taken them to buy it, often giving them discounts if it suited both of our needs for them to have the better gear. My only stipulation was that my loot be kept on me and not with the party's funds. By the end of the campaign, I was several levels under the party but had a huge stockpile of gold saved up to buy a nice island somewhere and live the good life. We finish off an evil Draco Lich that was bent on world domination and are about to go our separate ways when the party barbarian stops my character and demands that I give them back the gold they paid for their equipment or he would kill me and take it from me. I tried to reason with the rest of the party, but they were all being greedy f***ards. It was 4 vs 1 and I wasn't allowed spells from outside the player's handbook, so none of the fantastic BS of celerity could save me. And the barbarian would unquestionably beat me on initiative if it got to combat. I resigned to my fate and I did the only thing I could do and spoke to them one last time. Lali Lulelo. Our cleric's armor suddenly burst into sunlight. The barbarian's weapon animated and began to attack him while his armor locked in place, freezing him on the spot. The rogue was disintegrated on the spot as his gear spontaneously blasted him with magical rays, and within a round, the party was either dead or incapacitated. Save for my character, who calmly approached the frozen barbarian as he was hacked apart by his own weapon, pulled out his book and flipped to one of the first entries. As I described this, I pulled out my copy of the book and did the same, turning it so that the rest of the table could see where their names had been scrolled on the day I had met them. There was never any doubt in this outcome. I knew that your greed would overwhelm you, and took the necessary measures to stop it when it did. Perhaps if you had simply let me go, things wouldn't have gone just as planned. The table just kinda stared at me in silence. I didn't play a very talkative role in the campaign, and usually kept what I did separate from the party pretty brief. They hadn't even known my alignment, as my evil deeds were usually of the subtle sort, such as unfair contracts and manipulating the party into doing what I had planned. After the final fight, I gathered the loot from the Dracolich's horde, including the materials and instructions required to make a phylactery of my own. The campaign ended with my character getting the credit for saving the continent and being lauded as a hero, and the others quickly forgotten. I claimed that they had fallen under the influence of the Dracolich and had been destroyed. The only legacy they left were their names scrolled in my book. Okay, I'm just gonna assume that the DM was told about this initially. I don't know, I like he had to allow this to happen in order for it to happen, right? Um this was a great turn of events though. I mean this is a great way to get revenge <laughs> on a party of horrible people, to be honest. Amazo, orange transparent chainsaw. Best magical item that you ever had or created. Mine was something referred to as the Wonder Golem, or a Mazel for short. 
It started off as a clunky golem that my sorcerer and a fellow destructive nutjob who happened to own the magic shop had laden down with everything from the shop that we didn't want to carry with us while fleeing the enemy army. The only instructions we gave it were something along the lines of sick um. It nearly turned us to stone the second we turned it on, and it did turn about 40 enemies to stone during its first round of existence. <laughs> it conjured tornadoes and magical death, and even healed the enemies who lived through its attacks now and then. But what really started to give it its power were the wishes. Amazo rolled randomly on the huge list of artifacts that we quote-unquote borrowed from the country's predominant magical storage areas to do its attacks, and it just kept hitting wishes. Its first wish turned it into a well-articulated killing machine. No clunky shambling, and it strode across the field of battle like death incarnate. But the saga of Amazo was far from over. As it brought death and destruction to those in front of it, my sorcerer and the shopkeeper began fleeing like scared rabbits, looking back every opportunity they got to see more badassery. And then the unthinkable happened. It began hitting the holy items that we'd put into it. Now, neither myself nor the shopkeeper were religious, which meant Amazo didn't so much as call upon the gods' assistance as reap their power from heavens and make it his own. After the next instance of miracle, he was a killing machine without peer, fluid steel that strode across the battlefield with grace unmatched by man or golem. Then he teleported to the abandoned city that we were trying to hide in and summoned a bunch of elder elementals. There was a lot of running and screaming at that point, but soon his attention turned back to the army, in time to see four ancient dragons on the horizon and to get another wish which turned him into a dragon equal in size and shining like the purest mithril. He kicked off the ground and began to kick the sh** out of the dragons, until one of the riders, who happened to basically be a demigod by this point, knocked him to the ground. And then Amazo was undone, not by the hand of the enemy, but by his own breath weapon, which was also randomly rolled. Miracle breath. It took the combined players of about 200 people to summon up enough power to finally end him, and the explosion leaves a magical scar in the landscape which will likely persist for eons. My sorcerer's deity slot is no longer blank, it now has one word on it. Amazo. Mission failed successfully. Dumb <laughs> as in accidents? Being excessively stupid? Or stuff that you would be defined as just plain dumb for your character to attempt? My paladin was sitting alone in the tavern while the party was doing some irreputable thing and didn't want me knowing when a peasant comes in to warn everyone to hide because scouts saw that the orc army that had been alluded to during the entire campaign was just a few hours march away. The rest of the party had no idea and they were away and were actually getting killed by being stupid and being led into an obvious trap. My paladin character who has been laughed at his entire life for one thing or another, stepped up with an air of determination that would have made even the most epic veteran of many wars quiver. He told the guards how to set up the defenses as he rode off to prevent this town from being destroyed in any means he could. This orc army had been devastating the lands. Since the beginning of the campaign have we heard about their epic level half-fiend orc fighter, specked cleric of orc god, leading the campaign his army of 10,000 marched to the town to claim it for their god. And my level 7 paladin rode off to stop their reign of fear and destruction right there. I met an orc scouting party and told them to go tell their boss to surrender. Otherwise, this will be the last day that he sees on the surf. They laughed, so I fought and broke their squad and won the fight against the 10 of them by being smart and getting lucky. In the meantime, the rest of the party had whipped by falling in the most obvious of traps and getting backstabbed. I so wanted to scream at them for being so stupid and warning them, but I wasn't about to meta game. So the DM concluded that the campaign was over, but I stated that I wanted to continue, and if I died, I died. I would at the very least see the rest of the story be told, damn it. So there I was, at the edge of this forest, watching the orc army move past me. I took out my bow and fired a shot into the mass, killing something. Then again, and again, until they realized someone is killing them from the forest. They sent in a group to find out who it was, and I hid from all of them, and killed anyone who found me. I continued shooting into the mass, and they sent even more people into the forest. I continued this for a few more minutes, until finally I saw the vampire fang dragon in the sky flying towards the forest. He used some sort of fire breath attack for some reason, and started burning down the forest. I took pot shots at the dragon until I pissed it off. I ran through the cover of the forest and searched for a fallen sturdy log and a high Y-shaped tree bearing. I lifted the log using all of my strength to drag it on the Y-shaped tree bearing 
and I fired flame arrows into the air to show the dragon where I was. I mounted up as I saw it approach and when it was close enough, I did something stupid. Compared to everything else, it really was. I rode my war horse up the log and jumped into the air as high as it could go and then jumped off, passing the necessary rolls to do so, and jumped on top of the dragon. <laughs> Then I grabbed the evil orc cleric's boot and desaddled him and made him fall. In the meantime, the dragon beat me and did a lot of damage and two negative levels. My horse died from its fall. I rolled to hit and luckily did max damage on my cold shot to its wing, tearing it out. It plummeted to the pine tree forest below, staking itself into the trees. In its death throes, it breathed an everlasting curse against me and screamed to its master to avenge it, breathing fire everywhere. And now in the clearing, I grogged in pain and attempted to heal myself while standing and watching through hazed eyes as the half-fiend orc approached me. Giant bond tower shield and great war axe in hand. I saw orc warriors circling the area. The orc warlord said something in orcish and the warrior stopped circling us. I hope your ancestors grieve at the knowledge of the stupidity they have sired. You will die this day, and not even in death will you escape the fate that you will face, as an eternity of pain beyond your comprehension awaits you. Your soul will forever be engulfed in suffering, and it will know no repentance, as he heals himself and buffs himself up. All you will find this day is death, and forever on, only pain. We roll initiative, and I win, but I miss, so I draw back. Move and attack and one attack hits and brings me down to 15 health. I slam against a tree and am brought down to 4 hit points. I pass my fortification save versus massive damage. New round, and I hold off my turn until he is close enough to attack as he comes near. Feel accomplished, Paladin. You made this day memorable. For myself, at least. And I will make sure that there will be no one left to remember you, your name, or what you did here. That village will burn, and all within it will die. You are nothing but a stain on my blade. Nothing. I knew it. This was it. There was no way I was going to live through this. Not even with a crit. I was going to die. But goddammit, I was going to go down swinging. So, he spoke my epitaph to my own thoughts and memories. Detailing everything he knew and why he had become a paladin. And even though everyone had laughed at him and ridiculed him, that he would save them. Even if they never cared, even if no one cared or would ever care. He walked up to deliver the final blow and I screamed out loud and swung. All hope resided on this die, and I wanted some memorable scar to leave him with. Up to this point, this die that I had used always failed me when it mattered the most. But I kept using it for the day that for all of its bad luck, it will one day churn out luck so unbelievable and count at the right time. So I rolled to make it spin, making it last forever, and it finally came out. <laughs> oh boy, okay, after some time passes, I'm assuming we're waiting, then it had rolled a natural one. I groaned and the DM laughed at me. He said roll again to see how bad you failed. I rolled again and another natural one. I groaned again, the DM laughed and told me to roll again and if I got another one, I was dead. I rolled and thought about how embarrassing it was going to be to die by my own hand. And there was another one. I sat there in complete pissiness and threw my dice in the f***ing trash can as the DM laughed and consulted his book for critical failures. He rolled his dice and referenced the book and froze. What? I decapitated myself, didn't I? <laughs> he didn't say anything. Well, what is it? He just looked up at me in a look of befuddlement and spoke words that I will never, ever, ever, ever forget. <laughs> Player and adjacent target die. <laughs> I, I, I cannot believe how, how incredibly lucky that was somehow. That was the unluckiest thing ever and it turned out to, to work out somehow. I mean, he would have died anyway, right? The the uh, player character there. Alright, well that story had a way better ending than I expected when I saw the natural ones. <laughs> Alright, on that note, that's me for today's video. So thanks for watching, watch, I hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to like if you didn't swear for more if you haven't already. Also, thank you to everyone's working channel on Patreon and social new to buy pretty lots of thanks much for those. Links are if you want to check them out, as it's in the Saturday Discord and anything else. And uh, yeah, that's it. Thanks again for watching, I'll see you next time. Have a great day, bye!